One month ago, you were a semi-regular high school student whose biggest concern was where you were gonna get your next gig. Now, you and Don are trapped in a room with Mr. Lewis, a teacher for whom you just found definitive proof that he had an affair with Gabby Navarro. Chapter 9. Case closed. Doubtful. I'll ask you one more time. What are you doing in my classroom? Honestly, I... Got bored of Pat Bradley. So I snuck out. I figured this was the last place anyone would look for me. Mr. Lewis furrows his brown for a second. You're worried you lost him. And then he heaves a resigned sigh. Eh, Blake, you're concerning me here. Breaking into a classroom is unlike you. Don't blame Blake, Mr. Lewis. I, I put her up to it. Mr. Lewis glances at Donovan with a frown. In that case, Donovan, I really wish you'd bid her influence to Blake. She's a good kid. Lewis appraises you for a long moment before shooing you away. I'll let you off with a warning this time, Blake. I'm not a very impressed with this behavior, though. Understood, Mr. Lewis. It won't happen again. You and Donovan slip out of the classroom, blending into the seamlessly, uh, with the throng of students moving through the halls. Millie and the others sidle up to you. Psst, how'd it go? There was a love letter from Gabby and Lewis's desk. No question, they were having an affair. And I was hoping it was just all a misunderstanding. That son of a... We need to bring his ass down. I'll drop the letter in the principal's mailbox after school. No way they can sweep something like this under the rug. Wouldn't surprise me at this point. What Lewis did was wrong, but do you really think he killed Gabby? Unfortunately, that'll be up to the cops to decide. A twinge of bitterness strikes you, itching like a spider bite. You're sure there's more to this case than you know, and you can't trust the PD to follow a lead past its obvious conclusion. Even so, no matter the outcome, we need to put this information into the hands of someone who can do something about it. And we can't let Mr. Lewis get away with what he did to Gabby. The next morning, you're fidgeting in your seat to chem class, jiggling your legs so bad that Millie reaches across the aisle to put a hand on your shoulder. I get you're nervous, but all the toe tapping is starting to give me a headache. Sorry, I just don't know how I'll face Mr. Lewis if he shows up today. Make that when he shows up. Mr. Lewis strides into class, just as the bell rings your stomach twists uncomfortably at the mere sight of him. Morning, all. I managed to, to breeze through grading your lab reports last night. Really solid stuff after all. Mr. Lewis's voice fades to static as he chats with the class, rummaging through his bag for your reports. Millie glances at you with wide eyes. How is he here? I have a guess. The school obviously needs to investigate more. As solid as the letter is, they can't just jump to conclusions without finding more evidence. But how long are they going to let a known pred walk around school? No idea. I mean, it could be fake, it could be a hoax. They have to investigate this. It doesn't doesn't happen overnight. Mr. Lewis makes his rounds, passing out graded reports, like he doesn't have a care in the world. When he gets to you and Millie, he beams. Nicely done, you two. This is the strongest analysis I've seen in a long time. He cheerfully slaps down a stack of papers and blazoned with a purple A+. Thanks. The corners of his mouth twitch. Blake, would you mind coming to see me at lunch? It'll be a quick chat. I'll just have some concerns I'd like to address with you. Your mouth feels dry. You ball your hands and up into fists under the desk, your mind racing as you grasp for an answer. But before you have a chance to speak, the classroom door flies open with a loud bang. Officers Tate and Murphy walk in, tailed by the principal. Is this a classroom of Joshua Lewis? Uh, the police? What the hell? The whole glass is suddenly buzzing with theories about why the police are. Mr. Lewis sets his mouth in a firm line. Everyone, keep calm. Stay in your seats. Officers, how can I help you? Hands behind your back, Lewis. You're under arrest. For institutional uh, sexual charges or assault. Additional charges may be determined before the case goes to court. 
I'm uh, pretty sure we're not going to even discuss that in front of students, but hey, only in Pixelberry. Institutional... Hang on, I never... Tate seizes him by the shoulder, turns him around roughly, looking stunned loose, allows himself to be handcuffed, and stares out of the classroom of confused, horrified faces. I'm sorry, everyone. I promise you, this is all just a misunderstanding. You have the right to remain silent. Tate carries on with Mr. Lewis as Miranda writes as he escorts the teacher out. When they're gone, the class erupts in cries of disbelief. Did they seriously just say Mr. Lewis took advantage of a student? He would never do that. Blake, do you know what's going on? All I know is... It's none of our business. What's going on with Mr. Lewis is clearly private. Since when have you cared about people's privacy? Listen, and what happened if I had nothing to do with this and had no clue? Why does everyone look at me for answers? Seriously. There has to be something you can tell us. Even if I knew anything, it wouldn't be my place to tell you. There you go. A minute later, the sound of the soul of a siren blares from the school parking lot. You all run to the window to watch the police car drive away, but the principal orders everyone back to their seats. I'm very sorry you all had to see that. The officers were hoping to catch him before school started, but were behind schedule. A substitute teacher will be arriving soon. Until then, I'd like you to read quietly at your desks. A hush falls over the class. Most of the students return to their seats, but Joanna remains near the window, fidgeting. Miss Morgan, I, I have to go to the nurse. Cherry's out of the room without even grabbing her stuff. You and Millie share a puzzled look. This day keeps just getting stranger. Tell me about it. You didn't follow the clue to the nurse's office. The rest of the week is unsurprisingly a little weird. News of Lewis's arrest spreads fast, and so do rumors of the charges against him. You're lingering outside of school with Millie, Steve, and Donovan, and Tyler. The latter of whom has convinced you to tailgate for tonight's football game. Still can't believe I let you rope me into this. I knew I'd grow on you eventually. I promise, if we haven't had fun, I'll uh, owe you an all-dinner. Even those of us who uh, had to be here anyway on mascot duty? Okay, no shark gets left behind. Think of it this way, Donovan. Parties are a great place to observe and gather intel. Gather intel? Here I was thinking we got our suspect arrested. I know. But something's still bugging me. We got Lewis on uh, the relationship with Gabby. He had motive to kill her, but we don't have evidence to back that up. Love as I am to say this, isn't that the cop's job? Yeah, I mean, there's only so much evidence we can collect ourselves. Is there something specific that's making you nervous, Blake? Actually, Blake and I might be thinking the same thing. No, it's Amelia taking in her anxious expression. Ah, uh, what's bugging you? Today in class after Mr. Lewis got arrested, Joanna Morgan seemed really bothered about it. Almost like she took it personally. Isn't Joanna Morgan that super straight-edge girl? The one whose parents make her wear long skirts? Yeah, she was at the funeral, which I thought was strange since I never saw her and Gabby together. So what? You think the shy person at Beechwood High is a cold-blooded murderer? I didn't say that. He just seems emotionally involved. Mr. Lewis is her favorite teacher. What if she had a crush on him? Got jealous? It's a bit of a stretch, but it might be worth looking into. Okay, okay. Can we just put pause on the detective stuff for one night? Despite what some of you seem to think, we are still in high school. It would kill us to have fun every now and then. <sighs> yes, it would. Yes, it would. <laughs> His words remind you so strongly on Gabby and what she said to you before she died. That you're hit with a pang of remorse. You share glances with these uh, others and then smile. One night. That's all I can promise. Well, I'll take it. Let's go. Before we miss out on all the good drama. 
you and your friends head out to the seniors only parking lot where groups of students are hanging out in the beds of pickup trucks. They laugh like they don't have a care in the world. You're not sure you'll ever know what that feeling feels like. Pretty much, yeah, good luck. Okay, this is a vibe. Lucky for us, there's more to do at football games than actually watch football. She waggles her eyebrows, and as much as you're a, a crack detective, you're not sure exactly what she means by that. She means make out. As you roll up to the crowds of students, a freshman you don't recognize jumps up from a booth selling spirit wear, dragging you and Millie over. Wait, you are, uh, are you Blake Stone, the girl detective? Um, who's asking? It's you! Like, you're a hero on campus. Your uh, ticket's on the house, and uh, if you're interested, I'll give you half off spirit gear. Oh, do it, do it. If we raise enough money, they'll buy me a new mascot outfit for new uh, for next season. The one I've got is uh, now home to a, some persistent spiders. No matter how many times I shake them out, they always come back. That's nightmarish. You have to at least take a look. These are uh, my fave pieces for the football season. Diamond choice. That's nice. I guess. So we're going with uh, shorts, cut, just a cloth as a belt, and I mean, I guess. Duck into Millie's nearby car, changing your new owl's fed. When you hop out of the backseat, Millie wolf whistles. Now that's some shark pride. Uh, you've never whistled like that in your life, have you? I was genuinely surprised I even have the ability to do so. Returning to the tailgate, you and Millie elbow your way through the crowd, searching for a familiar face. It's surprisingly packed, and you keep bumping into people. Whoops, my bad. Oh, there she is. No worries. Pardon me. Go right ahead. You see a break in the crowd and go for it. But in the process, you lose sight of Millie. Hey, Blake! You lost? You see April Morris and a few other students hanging out at the, the periphery of the tailgate. You glance over your shoulder, suddenly overcome with the feeling of being watched. The case is over. Stop being paranoid. You shake yourself and head over to where April's sitting. We were actually just talking about you along with, like, everyone else in school. And not just because of your cool shirt. I didn't realize you were so rah-rah. Only uh, where discounted fashion is involved. But if you weren't gossiping about my fashion sense, why am I apparently the talk of the school, and why are people so weird around me? By weird, you mean nice, and are you really that surprised you took down some skeezy Mr. Lewis? Says who? Eric told Justine he heard Max telling Rob they overheard Rob's tattoo artist and her friends talking about how you found a love letter from Gabby. To Lewis. Hmm, interesting. Sure, those are all names, and you're pretty lost until she gets to Rob. And you're the ringleader, obviously. Our own Veronica Mars. You're a hero, Blake. I guess that's why I've been feeling like everyone's watching me. Everyone is. I still can't believe it. Beachwoods always seem so safe, you know? Tell me about it. I mean, I knew uh, the girls were all in Lewis, but damn. Doesn't mean he had to act on it. Girls like Coach Waters, or Walters too, and you don't see him messing around with him. April kicks Alex in the shin. Cut it out, don't, don't you know? That he dated my missing sister when they were in high school. An awkward silence falls over the group, and you wave your hands to Brigham. It's fine, really. I honestly hardly know the guy. He was around all the time, but he didn't make much of an effort to get to know me. Uh, about the only thing I knew was that he hated me getting involved with pretty this detective work. We haven't spoken much since she... You trail off, April puts a detentative hand on your shoulder. I'm sorry, Blake. I, I can't imagine what it's like to be in your position. I mean, my brother is a certified jackass, but I still can't imagine how it would feel if he went missing. You let out a startled laugh. That's right. April's such a sweet kid, it's easy to forget she's Brett's sister. Um, not gonna argue with you there. But I think the point Alex was trying to make is that some men know how much power they have and abuse it. 
Yeah, Lewis is right where he belongs. What happened to this until proven guilty? This is true. Alex and Alicia's a debate fades to white noise as you catch sight of a familiar face staring right at you. That man. Again. Okay, not paranoid. He's definitely watching me. Before you can ask him what his deal is, a muffled voice catches your attention. Sorry, sorry. Had to do a quick costume change. But I found everyone else. Millie, Shark, waddles over to you, followed by Tyler, Stevie, and Donovan, all of them carrying snacks. Speaking of costume change, Blake, you look great. Really putting the cool in Skull. Regretted that instantly. Questionable jokes aside, that's a good look on you. Eh, uh, what are all you buttering up me up for? Buttering you up, babe, you look rad. Claudia suddenly bounces up beside you, beaming from a nearby huddle of stylish seniors. That's the first time I've actually seen you at a game, and you've already talking about leaving? Make it make sense. Uh, I don't believe we were talking about leaving, but okay. Relax, okay? I'm not going anywhere. We just got separated. So I came uh, over to hang out with... April! You follow Claudia's gaze to find April looking awkward and sheepish when she manages to meet Claudia's eyes and offers a meek smile. I was, uh, just leaving. You don't have to... But April's already winding her way through the crowd. Well, this is awkward. What was that about? Long story short, April and I used to be tight. She was like a sister to me until... Until you broke up with her actual, uh, sizzling. I... I bet everything Brett told her never to speak to me again is the only explanation for why she's so weird around me. Or maybe she had a crush on you, and because you dated her sibling, then she's like, well, this is code that you don't break. But anyway, if you ask me... April should make her own choices. Trust me. I've told her that a million times, but Brett can be a seriously manipulative guy. Talk about an understatement. I wouldn't be surprised if he controls her every move. I'm glad you both got away from that, uh, jerk. Yeah, sucks we can't say the same for April. Claudia, you should try and find some way to talk to her. I think she'd really benefit from having someone like you back in her life. Claudia offers a warm smile before a sharp sting of a whistle snaps her and Millie to attention. That's us, Claudia. Crap, I still have to change. Gotta run. We better see you all in those stands. Hmm, no, I'm leaving. I'll go take a nap. I really need one. The four of you follow suit, shuffling towards the bleachers to find seats. Dusk creeps into the darkness by the time you make it through the screening line. Well, at least they're taking security concerns uh, seriously. Tyler looks expectantly at Donovan, who's sipping on a slushy. So, uh, what's the verdict? Are you hating every minute of this? Nah. It's been kind of fun. Tyler cops his hands together and nudges Donovan's shoulder. Stevie reaches up and rumples his brown, dark brown hair. Oh, I think he likes us. Hmm. Took him long enough, though. Oh, Blake, make them stop. Sorry, this is too... cute. My three faves, all getting along. I could cry. Don't put a wholesome spin on this. You grin at your friends and step up to the bleachers. But freeze in your tracks when you see that weirdo from before. Already seated in the stands, watching you. Something wrong? I swear that guy over there has been watching me all day. He doesn't even look like he's here with anyone. Uh, maybe he's just nosy. The case has been getting traction in the news. I just found out I'm the hot gosh in my high school. I can't take local scrutiny to. Yeah, no, this is totally creepy. If you want to get out of here, there's a great spot for my fellow teen delinquents just behind the bleachers and around the corner. You mean the graffiti spot where everyone goes to make out? Some people go there to create art. Frenching is art, Navarro. At least the way I do it. Hmm, it's pretty out of the way, right? 
uh, say from prying eyes or whoever the hell that is. You can take a buddy, and the rest of us can distract that creeper while you sneak away. Well, I mean, that sounds a lot better than looking over my shoulder all night. Plus, I wasn't joking about the art. Some of it's pretty cool. Diamond choice. Hang out with Donovan. Because that's kind of a given. Shall we, Donovan? God, yes. Stevie and Tyler roll their eyes at Donovan's eagerness to escape. As the two of you go to leave, you see your friends huddle up, brainstorming a distraction. Yeah, but you're telling me that guy's not going to see us walk away? The two of you make your way to the school's infamous camera blind spot. The perfect hideaway for what you're about to do. Fortunately, it's uh, vacant when you get there. So yeah, it's not exactly a private island, but hopefully it's private enough. Honestly, it's perfect. Quiet. Check. Secluded? Check. Not to mention, it has you. In my experience, adding some Donovan Navarro tends to spice up any location. Hmm. It's giving me a lot of credit. Hmm. None of that hasn't been earned. Interesting. Because in my experience, the one who holds the spice is Blackstone. The two of you share a smile, and for a second, you catch a glimmer of Donovan's former self. Self-assured and effortlessly cool. But then, as always, a shadow passes over him. He leans against the wall and surveys the graffiti. Like, you know, leave your mark? Actually, I figured we could leave one together. He rummages around in a pile of tarps and debris piled up in the corner, emerging triumphantly with something shiny in hand. I mean, come on. We can't come all the way out here without adding our own artistic flair to the place. True. We want future generations to know our impact. Exactly. He hands you the spray paint, and as you approach a blank spot on the wall, you think carefully about what you want to write. I'll paint, get a clue. I mean, I can't really type anything like, uh, what's the word for it? Meaningful. Right, because it's very tiny space we get, but uh, sure, we'll get get a clue. Get a clue. Nice. I think it adds a little uh, je ne sais quoi, don't you? You add one final flourish to your creation. And step back to admire, as you do, something catches your eye. Look at that. CRBM. You don't think those initials are Claudia Rhodes and Brett Morris, do you? It looks old. If Brett did this, it would have been before he went to Juvie. Which was before they officially broke up. Well, we know that there was trouble in the Paradise before the Juvie thing. Gabby was trying to warn her away from her. So maybe Juvie was the final straw, and it wasn't the first time Claudia broke Brett's heart. If even has one. Do you think it's anything important? I don't know, not yet. We know Brett could have uh, or couldn't have killed Gabby, but we keep coming back to him. It can't be a coincidence, can it? Frowning thoughtfully, you snap a picture of the graffiti. Looks like we're coming to the end. There's like two or three things else we can add, and that's about it. Damn. My first time here, and I'm already collecting clues. Um, you've never really been here before. And, uh, it always seemed like a place you'd go to hang out with a specific click, and, well, I'm clickless. That's not such a bad thing, you know? You know, never said it was. Besides, in a weird way, we've kind of formed our uh, very own one. For what it's worth, Donovan, and despite everything that's happened, I'm glad we've gotten closer. He looks at you squarely as golden brown eyes, disarmingly earnest. For what it's worth, so am I. More than I can say. If I uh, didn't have you to talk to, I honestly uh, don't know how I could have coped with everything. I mean, sorry. That's a lot. 
you don't have to apologize. Just know that I'm here for you no matter what. I can't imagine how hard this has been for you. I know we weren't that close before, but I really want you to know. Whatever happens, I care about you. Blake, I care about you too, and for whatever it's worth, you can also count on me. I know I didn't trust you at first, but I uh, really appreciate how hard you've worked to find the truth, especially since no one else seems to care. Even with Mr. Lewis stuff, I feel like everyone's caught up in all the scandal of it all. Without acknowledging there was a real victim there. Exactly. Look, I'm, I'm not naive. I know uh, I can't control how other people react to or see things. I just think that sometimes uh, would it kill them to have, like, an ounce of empathy? Yeah... That is literally and figuratively how I feel about every day. I get it. You want to remember what Gamby was. A uh, living, breathing person. Not some kind of spectacle. Which reminds me, you really haven't had a chance to talk since Mr. Lewis was arrested. How are you? Really? A crease forms between his eyebrows. He runs a hand through his hair, seemingly choosing his words carefully. I'll be honest, I thought Lewis getting arrested would make me feel some sense of relief, but no dice. I keep thinking once they find evidence to really nail him, that'll help, or once he's been sentenced, I'll feel better. Maybe it was dumb for me to assume I'd never be fully satisfied no matter what happens, Gabby is gone. I have to ask. Is there something bugging you? Do you regret investigating? No, is there something bugging you? I'm not really sure. There's so much I haven't started to mentally process yet. The biggest thing right now, though, is that I have no idea about any of this. I knew Gabby longer than literally anyone, but I was so wrapped up in my own world that I didn't even suspect a thing. She hid it from everyone, Donovan. Don't beat yourself up for not noticing. I try not to, and I think uh, I'm getting better at it, but some days it's tricky, you know? I mean, of course you do. That's what's great about talking to you, if uh, I'm allowed to find a silver lining here. I think you're entitled to a silver lining or two. Thanks. Sometimes I feel like it's impossible to give myself permission to be happy. I know it's just grief, training wheels, but having someone to say it's okay to look on the bright side is a huge help. Good, because for the record, it is okay. Honestly, when Perdetta disappeared, I had a ton of people practically begging me to find some joy in my life, and I ignored them all. The fact that they've, uh, you're even willing to consider it is a huge step in the right direction. Donovan studies you carefully, his expression soft. This is going to sound weird, probably, but I, uh, I really wish I'd known you back then. You've been such a huge help to me and my family. You've made this process a thousand times easier, even when I fought you on it. I know it's unrealistic to think this, but I wish I could have helped you in the same way. Unrealistic? Maybe. Incredibly sweet? Absolutely. Honestly, Donovan, I'm just glad I have you now. We can talk about uh, all we want about the lost time and what could have been, but for once I'd rather live in the present. I get that. I'd still give anything to go back in time and save my sister. I'm not gonna be the same without her. But the one thing I wouldn't mind uh, wouldn't change is you and me. Getting to know each other, becoming close. You've changed my life for the better in so many ways. If I've made even half the impact on yours, then I'm happy. You have. Trust me. Thank you, Donovan. I've never really had anyone to talk to about this with. I knew I was never Perdita's disappearance, but I guess I didn't realize how much of her I was still holding on to. I still want to solve her case, but I'm starting to come to terms with the fact that I might never find answers. Man. There's a lot they don't tell you about grief, huh? Pretty much. I could write a book. There should be a handbook. Ironically, after saying that. Honestly, we could write it ourselves. How to Cope by Donovan Navarro and Blake Stone. 
Nah, I'm like Stone and Donovan uh, Navarro. You deserve top billing here. Very generous of you. You and Donovan laugh, and you're soothed by the warmth of a smile and the safety of his presence. You feel, uh, for an instant, like you're, he's a part of you. A manifestation of your own heart's aching. Thanks, Blake, for um, being you. And I mean it when I said I'm here for whatever uh, help you need. Now that you mention it, there is something. I could use a kiss. He steps in closer, rests his hands on your waist. His lips squirked in a half-smile. Didn't realize kissing me was so helpful. Oh, more than you know. He catches your lips with his own in a deep, heated kiss. His strong arms hold you tight against him as you sink into each other, consumed by one another's presence. You grip the lapels of his jacket as if on for dear life, matching his confident, insistent movements as he deepens the kiss. Donovan... You shut your eyes and gasp when his lips move along your jaw, his teeth grazing your pulse point. He laughs quietly against your ear, making you shiver. Mm, you're so damn cute. Only when it comes to you. After a long moment, the two of you pull apart. The sound of raucous cheers from the football field draws your attention. Guess we should get back, but, uh, Blake, let's hang out again. Just the two of us, preferably sooner than later. He cracks another broken smile and you can't help feeling a surge of affection for him. Your unlikely ally in the face of all this tragedy. I'd love nothing more. It's a close game, but in the end, Beachwood High reigns triumphant. You, Millie, and your squad walk through the parking lot in high spirits. I'm gonna hand it to you, Mills. That uh, might have been some of your best mascotting in. I'd like to think I contributed to our triumph. I can't believe we won. And I can't believe you're so excited about someone else's ability to throw a ball. What can I say? I appreciate some good sportsmanship. Spoken like a true jock. You should have seen Tyler and me running interference on that weird dude. It included a fairy flashy and, in CV's case, extremely sarcastic cheer sesh. They got the whole section of the bleachers involved. Ooh, team! Never again. You all laugh your ways across the parking lot. Big Millie, good night as she finds her car, but once you get to Tyler's, you stop cold. No way. I've come to see you. You must die. Oh, yeah. I'm like, what do you want from me? The guy who's been plaguing you all night is leaning casually against his car, hands in his pockets, and when he sees you, he straightens up. Excuse me. Are you Valentine Blake Stone? Depends on who's asking. You keep saying that. I'm a defense attorney working for Joshua Lewis. I'd like to know what compelled you to falsely accuse my client. I'd like to know what uh, led you and compelled you to uh, follow me and stalk me all day. And I'm sure the police and the judge would like to know that as well. Seriously. Also, when did we falsely accuse? <clears throat> In order to falsely accuse your client, I would have to actually make a statement. And I have not made any statement. I have not wrote anything. I have not blogged anything. I haven't said shit. So guess what, Mr. Attorney? I don't have to answer any of your questions, because if you were really an attorney, you would know that I have the right to remain silent, because you are no authority to make me talk. Now, go piss off. Anyway... <clears throat> Remember to like and share the video, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you want more. And head down to the description below. Tons of cool links. Feel free to check those out. Hey, would you like a kitty? No joke. I'm not even kidding. I have five of these bad boys to give away. Seriously, you want a kitty? Come to my house. Anyway, um, oh, been a long, tedious few uh, weeks now dealing with them. A lot of sleepless nights, a lot of allergies. Please send help. Anyway, I love your beautiful faces. Thank you all for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Peace out.